Hi, my name is Peter Chen Hong, and I'm from UCSF. In this module, we are going to talk about medically important protozoa, focusing in on gastrointestinal and genitourinary infections. At the end of this module, you should know the epidemiology and clinical manifestations of entamoeba histolytica infection, which causes dysentery. You should understand which populations are typically affected with Giardia and their clinical manifestations. You should know the epidemiology, clinical manifestations, and diagnostic testing modalities for two other common protozoa, Cryptosporidium and Trichomonas vaginalis. In the map of major human pathogens, we are going to focus in on the protozoa section. And zooming in, we'll talk about GI and GU protozoa, focusing in on these four organisms. Let's talk about the GI protozoa first. Entamoeba histolytica causes amoebic dysentery and liver abscesses. How do you get it? Well, you acquire infection by ingesting cysts via the fecal oral route. And this is via contaminated food and water. The infection occurs worldwide, but we mainly see it in tropical countries. In the US, one population that is affected is a population of men who have sex with men. The clinical manifestations follow from the pathophysiology. First, the infected cysts differentiate into trophozoites, which invade the colonic epithelium. You might hear about a flask-shaped ulcer that forms given the tissue destruction in the colon. My patients complain of body, bloody mucus-containing diarrhea or dysentery. The trophozoites then enter the portal circulation where they like the liver, and in some patients, Abscesses containing these trophozoites may form in the liver. In patients that I've seen, they complain of right upper quadrant pain. When you aspirate some of this abscess fluid, it's often described as anchovy paste or even chocolate. One clinical pearl is that a traveler returning with bloody diarrhea and or liver abscesses with fever could be a presenting sign of entamoeba histolytica invasive infection. On the image, you can see gross pathology of a liver containing amoebic abscesses after the trophozoites have invaded the portal circulation, moving on to the liver. You confirm your clinical diagnosis by checking three ONPs in the stool. You clinch the diagnosis by checking three stool ONPs. In the stool, you can see either trophozoites or cysts. And one diagnostic pearl that distinguishes Entamoeba histolytica from other Entamoeba species is the fact that the number of nuclei are very characteristic of this infection. In Entamoeba histolytica, there are four nuclei that are seen, and you can see these in uh, the picture. You can also use serology, such as an ELISA, to check for uh, invasive disease. And in fact, in a patient with a liver abscess and a positive ELISA, you don't need to do an aspiration to confirm the diagnosis. We treat patients with metronidazole or flagyl and iodoquinol for intraluminal cysts. The next intestinal pathogen that we'll turn our attention to is Giardia. Giardia lamblia causes giardiasis. How do you get infected? Like entamoeba, you ingest cysts in fecally contaminated food and water. A typical case is a hiker who drinks untreated stream water and gets infected. Infections are also seen in the daycare setting and among men who have sex with men. Once again, the clinical manifestations follow the pathophysiology. Like entamoeba, the cysts differentiate into trophozoites. The trophozoites attach to the gut wall, but does not enter the bloodstream. 
there is inflammation of the duodenal mucosa leading to malabsorption of fat and protein. And this leads to the clinical symptoms that I see in my patients. Patients usually complain of watery, foul-smelling diarrhea. And what's really notable about this infection is the amount of bloating, cramps, and malaise that patients experience. And the bloating and cramps may linger for several months, even after the end of treatment. We diagnose infection using serology or stool over in parasites. And we usually get three ONPs. And in the ONPs, you may see cysts or trophozoites. We treat infection with metronidazole or flagell. Let's talk about another intestinal protozoa, cryptosporidium. Cryptosporidium causes cryptosporidiosis. How do you get infection? The organism is acquired by the fecal oral transmission of oocysts from human or animal sources. Cryptosporidium can cause diarrhea worldwide, and large outbreaks have been seen in several cities in the United States attributed to inadequate purification of drinking water. There have been several swimming pool outbreaks as well. Amongst immunocompromised patients, such as AIDS patients, the organism may produce severe watery diarrhea. The severe watery diarrhea seen in AIDS patients is in contrast to a mild diarrhea which is seen in most other patients. We diagnose the infection using ONPs again with three samples of stools, where you may see acid-fast cysts. Acid-fast cysts are a very characteristic feature of cryptosporidium. Unfortunately, there is no effective treatment, and among patients with advanced HIV or AIDS, we recommend antiretroviral therapy. You prevent infection by filtering the water supply in cities, and unfortunately, uh, chlorination doesn't always work, but filtration does. So what have we talked about so far? We've talked about three intestinal protozoa, Entamoeba histolytica, Giardia, and Cryptosporidium. All of them cause diarrhea. Entamoeba histolytica is notable for its bloody diarrhea and the fact that it causes invasive disease manifested by liver abscesses. The other two organisms, Giardia and Cryptosporidium, cause mainly a watery diarrhea. A typical case in Giardia, if you recall, is the hiker who drinks unfiltered stream water. A typical case of Cryptosporidium is the patient with advanced HIV disease with profuse watery diarrhea. With all of these protozoa, you can diagnose infection with three ONP stool samples. You can also use serologic methods such as, such as an ELISA. Entamoeba histolytica and giardia are treated effectively with metronidazole. And in the case of Entamoeba histolytica, one also needs to use paromomycin which kills the intestinal cysts as well as the invasive disease form. There's no good therapy for cryptosporidium, although nidazoxanide has been tried. The best therapy for advanced HIV disease is instituting antiretroviral therapy. The last organism that we are going to talk about in, in this module is Trichomonas, which is a genitourinary protozoa. The last organism that we are going to talk about in this module is Trichomonas, which is a genitourinary protozoa. Trichomonas vaginalis causes trichomoniasis. Women may present with a watery, fall-smelling, greenish vaginal discharge, accompanied by itching and burning. Men may also have infection, although this is usually asymptomatic. Infection is sexually transmitted, so that when a woman is diagnosed with trichomonas, we advise partner treatment as well. How do you diagnose infection? 
Well, we commonly diagnose trichomonas infection with a wet mount, and you can see motile trypozoites. On a pelvic examination, uh, you can see what's normally referred to as a strawberry cervix. Because of the exuberant inflammatory response seen by the local infection. The drug of choice is metronidazole. And as mentioned, you also treat the sex partners.